Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you guys for coming today. Uh, as you all know, we have a fantastic opportunity to have a wonderful speaker. Um, Zach Smith is a serial entrepreneur. Having never worked a real job in his entire life, he's always started selling, running, and managing businesses. Mr. Smith has loved helping turn others, their dreams, their ideas, and inspirations into successful companies. His passion led to the creation of Funded Today LLC, the world's most successful crowdfunding firm. Funded Today has now cumulatively raised over $426 million and counting for 4,000 plus crowdfunding campaigns across the world and in 2018 was the 27th fastest growing privately held company in the United States. And on the prestigious Inc. 5000 list, number two in Utah, chances are if you've seen a successful campaign on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, Zach Smith and Funded Today have been the driving factor behind its success. Mr. Smith graduated summa cum laude as the valedictorian from Weber State University's Goodard School of Business and Economics. With a business degree specializing in accounting, he is fluent in Mandarin Chinese and has been featured in numerous publications, including Mixergy, The Wall Street Journal, USA Today, Entrepreneur, and Forbes. He's the author of Amazon's bestseller, Funded Today, The Ultimate Guide to Crowdfunding, and is also a sought-after keynote speaker at CrowdCon Import Summit, the Canadian Crowd Finance Summit coverage, and many others. Zach is a curious soul who craves knowledge and learning and never stops asking questions. Zach enjoys real estate investing, angel investing, private lending, playing competitive indoor soccer, competitive over the board chess, basketball, tennis, spike ball, reading and listening to business biographies and autobiographies, traveling and working with entrepreneurs. He is married to the beautiful and talented opera singer, Courtney Bergen, and has a doll of a daughter named Elliot Ellie Jane and little boy who is on the way and due in early March of this year, and a gorgeous golden doodle named Arwen, and resides in the glorious city of Ogden. Thank you all for coming. Might introduce Zach Smith. Thank you, Carter. I appreciate that. How's everybody doing tonight? Today? This morning? Let's get started. So, my story, from zero to 426 million in counting. But before we get there, I want to talk about a little bit about being a Laker. So, I had multiple roots to Bonneville High School, believe it or not. I graduated in 2005, I was 8th grade president, we won the district basketball championship that same year. And at Bonneville High School, I was academic all state, top three in my graduating class, and I was the runner-up for men's tennis at number one singles my senior year. My claim to fame in high school, I guess, was that I got on the front page of the sports section of the standard examiner, but I couldn't find a picture because my mom must have stopped scrapbooking for me sometime after the eighth grade. She had six kids, so I guess we can't blame her. <laughs> and my dad's also a math teacher at Waterloo High School. In fact, some of you probably have a class with this with Mr. Smith. And uh, my roots even go back further because my mom and dad are also Lakers as well. They were, they were high, school sweets or, uh, high school sweethearts, so. All right, serial entrepreneur. What am I? What does it mean? Here's my definition. A serial entrepreneur is an individual who is always working, but what looks like work to others feels like play to her or him. And rather than renting out time as an employee, runs businesses large and small, while assuming all of the risks and rewards of these ventures. Now, the essayist, Nassam Talib, said the following. There are two great addictions, heroin and a monthly salary. Serial entrepreneur. Now, maybe you guys watched a lot of How to Make a Murder or something on Netflix or things like that. It's not like a serial killer type thing, okay? Serial entrepreneur. I don't care how large your network is, nor how rich you are. I don't care whether the top hedge fund manager hurts your halfway. If somebody has to tell you when to make work, what to wear, how to behave, you're not a completely free person until you're financially free. You're not actually rich. And that's why I want to unpack those two words for you. It's the answer I give to every single person who says to me, hey Zach, what are you doing for a living? Serial entrepreneur. And intrinsically, that's what doing what I do means to me. I firmly believe that 40 hour work weeks are a relic of the industrial revolution, that we are rapidly outgrowing. Solopreneurs and entrepreneurs function like athletes who train and sprint, then rest and reassess. As our society continues to steamroll into the future, machines might still be working 9 to 5, but I don't think us as humans will be. We're not meant to be. 
Now, I'm not a workaholic. I believe in this thing called holistic harmonization that I've created. Future book coming out on as well. And it's the way I govern my entire life. I believe my mission is to organize a person's way of life and make his or her intelligence, health, relationships, finance, and purpose better and more harmonized. Holistic simply means to be characterized by the treatment of the whole person, rather than just the symptoms. And harmonization is the combination of all facets of what makes us who we are by creating a pleasing effect. Today, people around the world live without fully realizing their goals and dreams. So I consider it a privilege to help others. As life continues to hit us with challenges and roadblocks, we all need to continue to evolve. And so I aim to help people find the mindset and be the person they want and actually even need to become. Okay, now the story of my journey. Probably why you guys have some questions here. I've heard it said that your real resume is just a catalog of all of your suffering. In fact, if you look back at your life, on your deathbed, of all the interesting things you'll do, they'll likely largely be centered around the sacrifices you've made and the hard things you did. Venture capitalist and philosopher Naval Ravikant believes nothing worthwhile in life comes without pain and suffering of some level. So if you're looking for meaning, you must do hard things to create deep, lasting meaning. And entrepreneurship for me is a large key to where I derive tremendous meaning in my own life. The following is oversimplified, of course, but as I've gotten older, I'm 35 now, I'm 34, I'm 35 in April, I've realized life is short-lived. It's fleeting, and we die. And recently I came upon a wonderful quote by Confucius. It goes something like this. Every man has two lives, and his second life starts when he realizes he has just one. That wisdom was like shut the music off, quake book type stuff when I was reading it. So as I share my story with you today, and share some of the lessons I've learned and applied, perhaps you'll have a wake-up call if you needed one, or if you're already halfway there, perhaps you'll be incredibly motivated to realize you could leave life right now. So what are you going to do immediately following this presentation to live the best life ever? As the great ancient Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, how long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? Okay. Now the beginning of my story actually has local roots as well. I had just graduated, I went on a two-year LDS mission, and I had come home and I had seen someone who was very successful. And I decided to essentially ask if I could come and see what they were doing. So one day led to a week, a week led to a month, a month led to a year, and we created a pretty successful company that eventually I exited for lots of money. I took the knowledge that I learned from that business and created a company called Start Your Own Business. And this was early on in the internet days when Facebook was just barely becoming a thing. I couldn't even advertise on Facebook. When email marketing was still the biggest way to make money. And I created a company called Start Your Own Business. At the same time, I was going to Weber State University, pursuing my undergraduate degree. And I had a client reach out to me and they said, and they, they were in South Ogden, Utah, and they said, hey, at the time I built like an accountant attorney, and it was on retainer, so I charged an hourly rate. And they're like, we can't afford your hourly rate, but have you heard of this thing called Kickstarter, crowdfunding? We've got this cool idea, and if you help us raise money for it, rather than pay you your hourly rate, we'll give you 35% of all the money that you raise. And I said, all right, let's go for it. And she was a seamstress, she was in her late 50s, and she invented this little guy right here called the Ruse Fork. This is probably one of the earlier prototypes. Maybe some of you have seen it. Basically, it just snaps on your waistband, holds your car, your keys, credit card, blue energies if you're a marathon type like that. But at the time, she had just kind of like sewed it in her, in her basement. And anyway, 35 days later, we designed a page, we made a video, and we raised them over 100, I think it was like 115,000 bucks. There it is, 115,000 dollars. And for this little guy. And suddenly, everybody wanted to know how a 50-year-old woman in South Logan, Utah had raised over hundred thousand dollars in 30 days. And so our, they, they started knocking the doors out. I didn't have a company right now, I was still reading this company. But they said, hey, help us raise money, help us raise money. Tell us what, tell us what we should do. And eventually, we decided to run another project. And we were successful that way. We ran another project, we ran another project. And it worked out incredibly well. Basically, very quickly, I learned that we are living in an age of infinite leverage. And because of that, the impact of great decision making is much higher than ever before. At Funded Today, I was living proof of this technological empowerment coming to fruition. My results compounded exponentially, and I had massive scalability. And we had thousands of people from all around the world wanting us to do the same thing that we did for the Roost Board. And we did. We worked with projects, and we brought tons of ideas to life. Today, I have more people on the hit, ABC's hit TV show Shark Tank than anybody else in the world. Often when you see something on Shark Tank, chances are it started out with Funded Today. We got pretty famous with it. We got press written up all around the world. Local standard examiner feature there. 
came the Proud Kingdom Kings, and then, as Carter mentioned, I was the second fastest privately, second fastest growing privately held company in Utah in 2018. Made the 85,000 list. And that's my story. There's some pictures of my family. There's some pictures of our life together now. And I took all the millions of dollars that I made from that company, funded today, and I invested, started, and been a partner in 17 other companies around the United States. So, why does this matter? That's a question. Why does everything I just told you matter? Why does it matter for you? How can this actually help you? Here's what I'm thinking. I've learned a few key simple lessons along the way that I know can help anyone seeking to be more entrepreneurial to take more control of their life. So if you're more keen on learning and implementing what a rich life can do for you, your family, your loved ones, and the world at large, hopefully I can take out some of the confusion and turn your outlook into one of more calm and more possibility. Because a lot of times people get scared when they think about entrepreneurship, they think about risk, they think about how hard and confusing it is. So let's get started. All right. So first off, why is money important? I can guess that throughout your long life, young lives, you've already been told all kinds of fallacies and even downright lies about money. So from a multimillionaire yourself, Here's some real facts about money you may have never heard. One, money can't buy a fuck loving family, but it can buy more time with them. Two, money can't buy talent, but it can buy more time to train. Money can't buy good health, but it can buy a healthier lifestyle. And money can't buy happiness, but it can buy peace of mind. And I think that is what life is all about. It's about achieving lasting happiness, having moments, even days, weeks, or years of pure joy. And what does science say about money as it relates to happiness? Does money make us happy or happier? You may have heard about a study that found money makes us happy only up to $75,000 per year, and it levels off from there. In reality, that 2010 study by David Kahneman found that emotional well-being peaks at $75,000. But if you take another measure, life satisfaction, you find no plateau. Not at $75,000, or $500,000, or even a million plus a year. There is strong data indicating the more you earn, the more satisfied you are with your life. For developing and developed countries alike, being richer is correlated with higher life satisfaction. And if you want to know how to use your money to live a happy life, spend your money to buy yourself time. So it's by outsourcing, it's like tasks, going on memorable trips and vacations, helping other people to get rich too. In short, don't believe the headlines. Money is a small but important part of a rich life. And you can strategically use it to live a happier, more satisfying, joyful life as well. All right, how many of you like playing board games? Risk, Stratego, chess, what about sports? Basketball, soccer, tennis, debate, it's a sport, right? Okay. The reason this one is cool, the, the reason this was is important is because I love playing board games. I love playing sports, as you've heard in my bio. But out of all the sports and board games and other things that I've done in my life, my very favorite game of all is the game of business. Business is a game. Think about it. Games have rules, businesses have rules. We call those rules of business laws or regulations. Games have clear winners and losers. There's no medal just for trying, aside from perhaps the experience you gain. Games have strategy, risk, and challenge, just like business. So remember this, entrepreneurship and small business isn't scary if you think of it like a game that you love. So when I work, I lose track of time, because for me, work is play, 80 to 90% of the time. All right, next principle. Entrepreneurship is in the blood. It's risky, it's not for everyone, and it's okay. You hear my story, it sounds exciting, it sounds all glamorous, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to be like that. It's perfectly fine. But consider this. Most of your biggest dreams will start with taking some sort of risk. For you to get into a relationship, you risk getting your heart broken, getting hurt. If you're wanting to get the body that you want, you're going to have to risk changing how you live, how you eat, and how you exercise. For you to get wealthy and to change how you feel about yourself, you might have to risk your current job or career or your capital for all the money you've saved up. You have to work hard. I was even up until like 1.30 a.m. last night putting together the final touches for this presentation. It's not just about the Gary Vaynerchuk game of hustle and grind, but 40 hours per week doesn't cut it, at least not at first. If you want to really make a big, you have to understand, I'm a purebred entrepreneur. Like, for real, for real. That's the serial entrepreneur thing. So, it's documented, like lemonade stands, then those upgraded to snow cone stands, and then I was starting lawn care businesses, and doing aeration, and selling cars, selling things door to door. <clears throat> I did really well in school. I graduated with a 4.0 GPA and a full right, 100% paid scholarships across the world. Remember this, long before doing what I do now was considered volatile, and during a time where people like Steve Jobs, Jeff Bezos, Richard Branson, and Elon Musk, and others have glamorized entrepreneurship and made it pretty cool, entrepreneurship is a part of my DNA. It's in the book. Okay, next principle. 
voracious curiosity. I love this one. You've heard my stories from earlier <clears throat> about my times at T.H. Bell and Bonneville and Weber State University. So, question for everybody. How many books have you read and or in the past month that you weren't required to read for a class or school assignment? Think about that. How many podcasts have you listened to? When was the last time you went down a Google rabbit hole searching and researching something that piqued your curiosity? I hate to tell you this, but after you graduate from high school, learning doesn't stop. Especially not if you want to be successful. I'm still a voracious learner with a voracious curiosity. How many books have you ordered in the past month? What have you done in the last month that was not required to read? And in all actuality, the number of books, the books you read is just a vanity metric. It doesn't matter how fast or how slow you read. Audios, podcasts, articles, reading and learning is not a rush. Tortoises still beat hairs in the game of business and life 99% of the time. I no longer read just to say I read a ton of books, though I still do read a ton. Now I read to satisfy my voracious, intellectually curious nature. Remember this. Ask yourself, when you're considering reading a book, a blog post, or listening to a podcast, would I still read or listen to this if I could tell no one else about it? Would I still read this book if it wasn't required reading for my English class? Would I still find it fascinating? Then, I want you to read only those things to which that answer is a definitive yes. Next principle, find a great mentor or work for a great boss. I was fortunate to have some of the very best mentors and bosses I could imagine. My dad grew up doing construction and roofing in the summer when he wasn't teaching. And all of you are Lakers. I have teachers that I think are still here at Bonneville High School that were amazing for me. I still remember the lessons I learned from Mr. Edwards from AP History, Mr. Warren, English Honors, Mr. Penrod, weightlifting, Mrs. Melton, Matt, many, many others. Remember this, find a teacher you really love and, work and learn from them. Find someone in the local law and business community who has a high business IQ and a business that fascinates you and reach out to them and offer to intern with them or job shadow and do this as much as you can with as many different businesses and people while you're still young, while you still have the time. It's a huge, huge advantage. And I think a lot of my success was because I did that, but I didn't know that's what I was doing. All right, next principle. I love this one. It's called the Just Go For It, the Fell Fast Principle. One of the earliest stories I've funded today, and again, I kind of cut it out because I was telling, is the story of a company out of Orlando, Florida. They had raised $180,000, $190,000. And on Kickstarter, it's called All or Nothing Funding. They set a goal for $300,000. We can do math here, $300,000 minus 190, they had 110,000 bucks left to go. They only had 100 hours, roughly five days to get it. They called me up, because they had seen what I had been doing. This was probably a few months into funding today's story. And they said, help us. Now, we would have had to spend a lot of money to raise them that much money in a short period of time. If we didn't do it, we would have been out all of that money we spent trying to raise the money. And so we said no. But they came back, they begged us, they pleaded us, and they made us an offer that we couldn't receive, that we couldn't refuse. They said, hey, we'll give you X amount if you do it. And so we took a risk. We went for it. And as you can see from that chart, five short days later, we raised them $325,000. And we had made their product come to life. And that was a story that was another huge catalyst for funding today because somebody just saw us raise $100,000 in a couple of days. And that hadn't been done before. I love this. This is Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson is on third base. The picture, and it looks like I kind of cut off the picture a little bit, the pitcher still has the ball in his hand. He's about to throw it to home plate. Look at Jackie Robinson. He's almost to home plate. I love this story. He's going for it. He's risking it. You don't steal home base. You don't steal home plate. Home base. You don't steal home plate when the pitcher has the ball in his hand. Jackie Robinson did. And you can picture that in your life. But then I also want you to understand that life's not always fast. My wife and I went to Mount Everest in Calipatar and we got to about 18,600 feet, which is crazy highest in Utah is like 14,000. And it took a long time to get there. And when we summoned it, that's how summoned in Calipatar in the Himalayas. A lot of people in our group didn't make it. In fact, one guy almost died. He was the most fit out of all of us. He had done CrossFit, and P90X, and Insanity, and all those programs, and he was still struggling. It was because he was running the whole time. He didn't allow himself to climatize. And so he got altitude sickness. Slow and steady does win the race. And you can achieve great things, and it feels so much better too, if you don't have that fast rush of success. But we went for it. We climb mountains, you can too. All right. 
And I want to say this too. You're all still in high school. Most of you probably don't have a ton of money right now anyway, so that's okay. Most of you probably have some financial security because your parents are helping to support you. Take advantage of that time. You're all still so young. And when you're young, you can take incredible risks, many, many times over, lose it all, and still be okay, so long as you learn from your mistakes. When you're older like me, or your teachers, and you have a spouse and kids to provide for, it's much harder, scarier, and risky to take enormous risks. So dream big now, swing for the fences. Take your idea, or invention, or business to market. Don't worry about failure, it doesn't matter. Stop being hesitant, go for it. Okay, next principle, Pareto's principle. It's really simple. Essentially, it boils down to you focus 20% of your time on the few most important things, and then you'll achieve 80% of your desired results. So, as a student, how can you apply this right now? If you just show up for class every day, starting today, tomorrow, and do all of your homework, turn in any extra credit your teachers have, retake tests you're allowed, and just ask one to two questions each class on things you don't understand, I guarantee you that every single one of you can easily get a B plus average, if not even better. You guys listening to my presentation today are probably already exceptional students. That's the idea of 80-20. Being a great student is not that hard. 80-20 even allows you to be lazy in a sense, right? I try to focus on doing the tasks that only require 20% of my time and energy, but yield that 80%, $10,000 an hour, $20,000 an hour, $50,000 or more per hour when you factor in amortization of my time. So remember this, always be asking yourself, where can I apply 20% of my effort to achieve 80% of my desired results? And that's the secret to not stressing about school, business, and life. Okay, I love this one. Learn to be happy now. It's really important. It's kind of funny with the toothbrush. I got the worst job in the world. Toilet paper's like, yeah, right. No, you don't. So, I'm married to the love of my life now. I have a beautiful baby girl, a baby boy on the way. So many things in my life are so much better, and yet, some things are still the same. You don't even know the things you should be grateful for. You don't even know how or where the grass is greener right now, where you're standing. In fact, until you experience something else, you don't even realize it was something you should have been grateful for, or that it was good. I'm super happy, super lucky, and super not lucky too. I've had imposter syndrome, bouts of depression and anxiety, sometimes even for months at a time. But it's okay, it's totally fine. Refer back to your bosses and mentors I mentioned earlier. Hang in there and get the medical help you need as required. But like me, I want all of you to be able to save. Remember when you didn't do your homework? I worked. I didn't do fancy things. I saved my money. I had thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions and tens of millions. I was patient. I was saving cash to go on the offensive. I knew something would happen one day, then it did. I pivoted at the right time many times throughout my life. Everybody's the happiest when they get to do what they want to be doing. And that's the seductive nature of entrepreneurship because you have this thing called control. You get to be your own boss. But, here's the downside. The company that you create can become your boss. Overextending yourself and paying for your lifestyle can become your boss. Stay grounded. I am stunningly the most practical, most rational entrepreneur you're ever gonna find. But, I'm consistent. I focus on winning by a week, by a month, by a year. And sometimes, some of my companies, going on a decade. How do you stand out forever? You continue to do great work. My pontifications come from the output of my doing. Remember this. Very simply, I think it's a lot better to take advice from somebody who has done the thing you're freaking talking about. So as much as possible, listen to people like me. Learn to be happy now and find joy in your entrepreneurial journey. This is a saying I went on in my life. Uh, when it, it was a pretty hard time. I, I was talking to a client. He happened to be a Harvard professor. He was hiring us to raise money for a new smart wallet that he had to get. And he said, Zach, perspective is a private experience. Find people who see reality similar to you. And there's a great Chinese idiom called Mamra Mo Shang, means blind man touch elephant. And the story is a bunch of blind people hear about an elephant that's come to town, but none of them have ever heard of what an elephant is. So they run out to meet the elephant. But of course, they don't know what an elephant is, and so they decide to figure it out. So the first, the first guy, he does, he does something kind of interesting. He builds the trunk, and he says, oh, this elephant must be a snake. The second blind man fills the ear, and he says, oh, an elephant must be like a fan. The third fills the leg, and he says, oh, it must be like a tree, a tree trunk. The fourth fills the side, and he says, oh, it's like a wall. The fifth fills the tail, and he says, oh, it's like a snake. And the sixth one fills the tusks, and he says, oh, it must be like a spear. It's only until they decide to actually get up on the elephant, ride his back, fill all around the whole parts, that they understand the 
whole breadth of the situation. I love this picture. Look at the guy. He's looking at an A, but what is he drawing? Drawing a beautiful bird, right? That's the idea of perspective. I love Michael Michelangelo's story as well. When Michelangelo finished painting the Sistine Chapel, people said to him, Wow, it's so amazing. You're a genius. He said, you knew how much work went into it. You wouldn't call it genius. Does that help you see how perspective is a private experience? So, this is what I'd like to say. Remember this. Always assume the positive in all of your interactions with people and realize that the way they are seeing the world is likely different than the way you are. And that's important in business, too. And that's okay. And the fact of the matter is, the real truth is likely somewhere in between your reality of seeing the world and what theirs is. And that's how you can have compromise, that's how you can have understanding, and that's how you can be very successful in business. All right, this next one is very exciting as well. It's something you may have not ever considered. Entrepreneurship has the greatest risk to reward return of anything you'll ever undertake. You build great wealth by owning businesses. So let me explain. You can go from completely poor to absolutely rich in just months. But it might take years to get there. Here's an example. Let's say you eventually have a business that provides you a net income of $5 million a year. It might seem crazy, but it's possible. Now let's assume that $50,000 is the median income for a single female or male. It's pretty close to that figure last time I checked anyway, and that's going to make my math easier. So $5 million divided by 15000 is what? 100. 100 years. This particular entrepreneur, in that example, in one year, netted more than the median income earner would have made in 100 years working a job that pays 50 grand a year. And I should know, I sacrificed for many years, for some years I made like $10,000 to $30,000 per year, probably for my first four or five years as an entrepreneur. Because I was young, could afford it, like we talked about earlier. But then I hit it big and made in one year what would have taken me roughly around 100 years to make had I become an account for a lawyer like I was originally planning to do. And then I did the same thing for many more years to come, Thereafter, consecutively. Now, if you're an employee, that's okay too. Lawyers and accountants make money by making partner. Principals and superintendents make money by managing teachers and school districts. Bill Gates, Zuckerberg, Bezos, Marcus Lamanis, they create leverage by owning businesses and starting new companies, bringing great new ideas, inventions, and services to life. And did you know, I talk about entrepreneurship a lot, but I love education as well, half of all multimillionaires are self-employed or own a business, and around 80% of millionaires are actually college graduates. So the whole college dropout, high school dropout story, it's not very accurate, actually. Remember this, you build great wealth by creating leverage, starting a successful business, and then creating and owning multiple businesses. Okay, a couple final principles here. I love this quote, because the greatest part about the world we're living in today is that in 2022 and beyond, you can do what you love and make great money doing it. You don't have to sacrifice or do something you hate. Explore this next great frontier where the boundaries between work and higher purpose are merging into one. Where doing good really is good for business. And finally, I love this quote by Peter Roosevelt. He says, It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. Thank you. Appreciate your time today. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, uh, Zach has been so kind. Uh, the book that he actually wrote, Funded Today, he donated a copy to the library. So if anyone wants to check it out starting next week, you can go and check that out and read it. Not just that, the person with the best question for the next couple of minutes gets a signed copy book from Zach himself. So if you have any questions, please raise your hand and ask. All right. Thanks, Carter. Carter will determine who the best question is. That way you guys won't hate me leaving out there. <laughs> Go for it. What made you figure out that you were the, the type to be there? That's a good question. I like that. So he, he asked the question, what made you figure out you were the type to be daring? And 
you know what it probably was? It was like I said, it wasn't something that I knew in the moment. When I was your age, I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was. I remember thinking the things I was doing, I was just doing them. I don't even think we talked about the word entrepreneur in my house. And so for me, it was retrospection. It was introspection. It was looking back after I'd done the things that I did and analyzing all the different decisions and things that I made to figure out, oh, that's who I was. But that's where I think you can have the advantage. Start thinking about that kind of stuff now, figuring out who you are, figuring out what you like to do. Analyze. Think about thinking. There's a good book on that, actually, by Daniel Kahneman as well. Thinking about thinking, I think is what it's called. But do those types of things, and I think it'll help you progress further. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
And so I would say to try things out. And then you'll know if it's successful. Give it a month, give it two months, give it three months. One of today, in fact, the funny story of the Roost Board is I actually didn't go start a business. Most of these stories are glamorized and shortened for time. After I raised the $115,000 for Bruce Board, I didn't actually do a lot. I went back to my other business. Even though you think, oh, why didn't we just go start 100 more? Why didn't we just go raise money for hundreds of more ideas? It didn't happen like that. It happened gradually. And so I would just follow the feeling of what you're seeing, and you'll see success. This was a great success story. And people started reaching out to me, and I was like, oh, maybe there's something more to this. I didn't realize this was just going to help one person. Maybe I could help thousands. So I would do that. Test out, try out little things. Take small risk to take a lot of them. Yeah. Can I shake your hand? Yeah, sure. <laughs> awesome. Nice to meet you, man. What's your name? Super Peter. Super, nice to meet you. Yep, thanks for coming. All right, thank you, everyone. Yep, thanks for coming. Excuse that, give a round of applause. Harder to get to look. I just want to ask you a question. Oh, yeah. We'll just take them. We're going to cover them on getting to class. Okay. <laughs> okay, talk to this man. I have a question. Yeah. Funded today, probably. I have some cool businesses now, though. I have one of the last, uh, if you want to ask about all the new businesses that I have, I have one of the last privately held mints in the United States. It's called Oz Mint, like the Wizard of Oz. We make gold and silver, basically. We take, we take bits of gold and silver from the ground, and we turn them into coins and bars, and we sell them around the world. It's called Oz Mint because the gold standard, you might have read about that before. So I, I guess, I guess uh, the guy who wrote the Wizard of Oz, or his name, Bomb or something? Anyway, he uh, followed the yellow brick road. That was follow the gold standard. And then uh, silver used to be what uh, Dorothy's slippers were. They weren't ruby slippers, I guess, in the book. They were silver. So anyway, the name of the company is Osmond. I really like that company. I think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. And it's surprising that people like to buy gold and silver just as a collector's item and a hedge against inflation. But I, I, have lots of, I have lots of fun companies. I have a diesel mechanic repair shop in Ogden, Utah. That one's kind of fun because I never really thought I'd be able to understand cars and things like that. So yeah. So once you like have the idea, you got like your beta test like product. What's the next step after that? Like immediately after that, what what's? It's a good question. Show? So in my opinion, I call it validation. So we have what's called the due diligence and product validation period. When you have which what uh, Brenda Brenda had, she had uh, th this one's probably a little bit better than prototype stage. But she had sewn this up on her sewing machine in her basement. And she came to me and said, Zach, here's what this thing does. I'm a marathon runner. This thing's great. It doesn't shake. It doesn't bounce up and down. It holds your goo energies in your wallet and your keys or credit cards, and you can run with it. You don't even notice it's there. I want to do something with this. So she wanted to validate the idea. So how did she validate the idea? She put it on Kickstarter. And essentially, when you put it on Kickstarter, people are paying to receive a product that you will eventually make. So all she had to do was make one product and then film a video and then make a page. If you go to kickstarter.com, you can see what it looks like. Look at all the, if you go to my website, you can see all the valuable products we've raised money for. Look at them and see how they did it. They make a two to three minute video, they make a page, and then they say, hey, buy my product. It's gonna be 20 bucks. And she got hundreds of thousands of people to give her 20 bucks for this product. Then she took that $115,000 that she made, no risk, and started this business. because She already had her first customers. So my thing is create a product, Validate the product on a crowdfunding platform like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, and then you'll see if it's successful or not. If it fails, ask the people who did support you if, it, if they did, you know, if you got like, let's say 10 or 20 people do it and it doesn't raise $100,000. Hey, why did you buy this product? What could I do to change it so that hundreds of thousands of people would want to buy it? And then listen to their feedback and tweak and pivot from there. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Yeah. question, how do you stay motivated? On the daily, weekly, monthly type of thing, you got to remember your past successes. A lot of times when it's like boring or hard or work doesn't feel fun, which happens sometimes even as a serial entrepreneur, you have to kind of remember what made it fun. You have to remember those Bruce Fort days, or the days when you raised the money for that project or when something really good happens. So I would reflect back on your past experiences. But then staying motivated over time is consistency. You have to have good habits. Do those same daily habits every single day. Even if you don't think you notice anything daily, weekly, monthly, because if you practice consistency, over time you will see great results. And then my lifestyle, it's pretty simple. I live a pretty modest life. Um, I bought the car I wanted, bought the car I wanted for my wife. All of my houses and cars are paid for. 
have a lot of money invested in lots of different businesses in the stock market. I'm pretty well diversified. I, I do what I want when I want to do it. That's the easiest way to describe it. So like, and I think that's what creates the greatest freedom. When I talk about holistic harmonization, I've got all of those wills, right? And they all have to be together to make my life the way it is. If I'm just doing all work, and sometimes you will. Holistic harmonization is not always having them spinning perfectly the whole time. Sometimes it's like 90% this, 10% this. But ideally, when you look at things with that bird's eye view, that's when you want to see all facets of your life working together. So that's what I'm doing in terms of living my life. I'm making sure that I have all those things going. I got a little fat the last two years with COVID. So I hired a personal trainer and we're pretty good now. You know? give, me a, give me a few more months and I'll be better. <laughs> so you have to kind of look at those things. And I'm always doing that. I have like a self-reflection period once a month where I ask myself all of those points. How am I doing financially? How am I doing on my health? How am I doing with my relationships with my family and friends and everything? And then I see where I can improve and I go from there. So that's kind of how I cover my lifestyle. And if I notice myself lacking, I ask other people too. Because sometimes I'm blind, right? Perspective is a private experience. And they say, Zach, you're a really big jerk about this or something. And then I can try to tweak it and learn it. As I gather feedback, I can become better now. Anybody else? Good. Thanks. Appreciate it. Excuse me, Zach. Oh. Thanks for dropping the hundred dollar bill and not picking it up. <laughs> Did I? No. Oh. <laughs> no. I had a, I had a couple hundred in my pocket today walking no, no, over. No. <laughs> I was kind of lying. Says, you gotta listen to Zach today because if he drops a hundred dollar bill, it ain't worth his time. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's nice.